Hey, and welcome to another video on Sign Global. Today, we're going to explore one of the most interesting aspects when it comes to working with Ableton, which is Max for Life. This platform provides so many inspirational plugins, and the developer community really put out some gems during the last years. And every now and then, they make something that finds its way into many of my own productions. The sheer range of available gadgets is mind blowing. Everything from sequences to tape emulations, weird delays and reverbs, filters, and, and much more. The plugins in this video are some of my most used tools when working on new tracks. So let's dive in. So this is just a quick rundown on some of my favorite devices and by no means a full tutorial on each of them because that would take way too much time. So let's start with an incredible little sequencer that took its inspiration from a very popular Eurorack module and it's called the Turing Machine. There was this guy named Alan Turing who invented a mathematical model of computation and essentially creating random values which we can use to generate sequences. You can of course use any synth you like. I chose operator for today. So when I'm hitting play in Ableton it's gonna start playing right away. And we have all these different settings we can control like the note shift which just means we can tell it which is the lowest note it should generate and which is the highest note. Then we have the tempo and swing section over here. We can tell it to play slower or faster. And we can apply a little bit of swing to it. Then we have the note length, which just tells it how long the gate length is for each note. Random velocity is always a nice one. I use this all the time. And if we click on this little guy here, we can see you can even assign all the individual triggers to random stuff down your chain. So the way this works is you have a random sequence coming up whenever you start playing. Sounds like this. And then you can choose the number of steps you want to play from 16 all the way down to two. I'm going to choose eight for now. And this little dial here is where the magic happens. So we don't want a completely random sequence, right? We want something that's reproducible. We want something that we can use in a track. What this change dial does is it will lock the sequence and it will be determined by the number of steps you entered here. Sounds cryptic for now, but just watch. You see it locked the sequence. There's a buffer involved. And if I didn't like the sequence, I can go back to change and lock another one. That's way nicer. So as you can imagine, there are endless possibilities for new sequences. And right now, this is not any musical scale really, but that's fine with me because I don't really use scales. Uh, actually, a major selling point for this exact device for me is the weirdness and the dissonance but you can, of course, use the built-in Ableton scale device or, like I did here, the microtonal scale unit. So, of course, we could spend more time on this little device itself, but let's keep it sweet and short and move on to the next one. I'm going to minimize everything on the left side and go over to this, which is the shape sequencer. This is a multi-stage sequencer, which means you can use as many stages within the, your chosen time grid as you like. And they also can have any shape you like, as you can see here. So usually you would use an envelope or a shape in our case for something like controlling the volume of an amp or a filter frequency cutoff. But sometimes it's much more interesting to use them on other parameters of your synth or even your effects chain for that matter. Maybe the dry wet amount, maybe the panning, lots of options. So I have it mapped to operators filter envelope amount, which you can see right here. Let's engage the filter, turn it on, and let's hear how it sounds. And I also have some reverb and delay here just to make it sound a little bit nicer. You know what, let's put a kick on top, why not? and switch to a few of the presets. You can 
also adjust the minimum and maximum level of modulation. Very cool. So you can see it's really easy to come up with some very advanced sounding sequences, even if there's not really that much happening. And lastly, there's an audio out option for this device as well. So you can use the CV gate button right here. And if you own a DC coupled audio interface, you can send all these values to your Eurorack system, which is very nice. So that's the shape sequencer. And the last one we're going to take a look at today is, I would call it a modern classic already, and it's called Slink Filter. This is what it looks like. This thing is just insane. Amazing on atmospheres, textures, uh, sequences, or even hi-hat groups. So this is an automated bandpass filter bank, and it's based on water movement, according to the website. Self-modulating, uh, moving, warping, and with a ton of options to customize it further. The magic for me really happens in this section down here where it says multiply and ripple. If we adjust these, you can see what's happening. As you can see, the filter movement changes drastically when you use these two values. Of course, you can also adjust the frequency, make it listen to your door tempo or not. I oftentimes leave this off and just use the Hertz value because it gives some more organic feel. Then you have your dry wet amount and you can go even further. You can tell it, for example, to not listen to anything below 500 Hertz. There's a very neat stereo mode on this which I almost always leave engaged because it sounds glorious. And there's a mono option. You can make everything mono below a certain frequency, in my case, like 200 Hertz. And if that's not enough, there's even more. You can open up this modulation section and then you can tell it to modulate everything and cross modulate everything between these three sections here, offset, invert, and gravity. So let's listen to how this thing sounds. So let me quickly return to my original settings and let's listen to all of our devices and context with some more drums I have here. So as you can see, Max for Life really opens up a whole new world of creativity within Ableton Life. I hope you found this useful. Please let me know in the comments below if you would like to see more videos in the future about Max for Life devices. Also, please make sure to check out our website, sign.de, and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Take care.